What is up guys, Fahir here from awesometoots.com and we are nearing the end of our game so the next thing that we need to do is create the block script which is gonna give that yo-yo effect you know like the blocks are bouncing on the sea like the waves are moving them up and down and some other things but before that go here if you're interested in learning 3d game development it's pretty useful after this course you can definitely apply to junior game development jobs if you're interested in that you're building your own games combining my 2d course with this 3d course you will definitely be a complete developer that's up to you but anyways if you also want to receive discounts on my courses make sure you sign up on my mailing list and you can do that by downloading the assets and the complete project link is in the description below so in the block scripts, we have the block manager and now I'm going to right click. So right click and create a new C sharp script, which is going to be the block script itself. These need to be attached on our well blocks. So I need to go into the prefab, select block and block one and add component. And here I'm going to search for the block script component. Automatically, the block script will be attached to this block here inside of our hierarchy or in the game, in the scene that is. So double clicking it, opening it in mono develop. Let me just tag the class and we can start adding the variables that we need. The one variable that we need is a public bool move like a yo-yo. So this is a yo-yo effect and I don't want this to be visible in the inspector panel. So I'm going to simply type here, hide in inspector. And inside of the star function, we're simply going to say if move like yo-yo is true and don't worry about this because we are going to take advantage of this variable inside of the block manager, which is right here. This one more line, we're going to get a reference to the block script and we're going to activate move like yo-yo. So if move like yo-yo, what we want to do, we want to say here transform dot do local or actually I did not type here using dg.tweening so import or type using dg.tweening so now we can do or type do move or local move y so move it on the local y and i am gonna move it let me just open it like this so the end value and the duration the end value is gonna be negative 0.1 f and let me just go back here so negative 0.1 f the duration is gonna be five seconds and now I'm going to close this parenthesis and I'm going to say dot and we need to say here set loops. So this is going to set the loop. And as you can see here, we have the int loops and loop type. And notice here what it says. Actually, does it say here loop type, loop behavior? Actually, no. Let me just type here negative one and I'm going to say comma. And now it says that. So number of cycles to play. So the first number, this negative one, is how many times you want to loop this move local y or do local move y. Negative one for infinite. So I'm setting negative one for infinite number of times. I want to repeat this infinite number of times. And the loop type is going to be yo-yo. And this is why I named this variable move like a yo-yo. So again, this is a function from DG tweening. What it's going to do is it's going to move the game object at this destination. So it's going to move it down to this destination or well upwards if this destination is positive. So by 0.1 downwards it's going to move it in this time manner. So in half a second and it's going to loop that movement infinite number of times with the yo-yo effect. In order to see this, we need to go into the block manager and right here we need to say temp dot this is the game object and we need to say get component and it's the block script component, not blocks, but block script. And we need to say dot move like yo-yo is equal to true. Now one thing to notice is that here in the hierarchy we already have this one block. For this one it's not going to be true because the default value here, so if we go into the block script, the default value for move like yo-yo is false. Because I talked about this numerous of times, if you simply declare a boolean variable like this, if you say public bool move like yo-yo and you don't type equal to true, 
even if you don't type anything like this, the default value is false. And if you type like this equal to false, well, it's obvious that it is false. But if you don't type anything and you leave it like this, the default value is that this variable will be false. That's the default value for the bool variable. So we need to go here into the block manager, get the block component script from the newly created block and set move like yo-yo to true, which in terms of is gonna have this effect. So if I hit play now, Notice, do you see the yo-yo effect? Let me just zoom in so that you can see it. Do you see the yo-yo effect? Can I, can I move this? Actually, no, no, I can only zoom it. Anyways, I can go here. And now you see the yo-yo effect. Do you see it? It's like they're on waves. You see they go up and down, up and down, up and down. It's like they are on waves based on the sea effect or the water effect that we have here. So this is that yo-yo effect and we can now go back here inside of the block script and continue coding it. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create void fall block. And this is going to make the block fall down. And the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to say cancel invoke, passing here the name of this function. And we will see in a second why we're going to do that. So here I'm going to say transform do local move y again, which is going to move it on the y axis at negative three. So it's going to move it down by negative three in 0 0.5 seconds. Now, after that, I'm simply going to say destroy the game object in 0 0.5 seconds. So what I'm doing here, first, I'm going to cancel the invoke this fall block because here below, we are going to have void on collision enter which takes a collision as a parameter which i'm going to name target and we're going to test if target dot game object actually dot name is equal to the cat meaning the cat is standing on a block because this on collision enter is in the block script the block script is attached on the block and if the cat is landed on the block or if the cat landed on the block, so we're going to test if the game object, so if the target that is currently on the block, if the name of the game object is equal to cat, and this is that game object, so make sure the name here match up with the name right here or it will not work. So if it's equal to the cat, then we are also going to test if move like yo-yo is true. Now, the reason for this is the following. So here we are going to call invoke and we are going to call the fall block function in 0.25 seconds. Now, why am I calling this move like yo-yo? Let me demonstrate that. So here I'm simply going to comment it out and call this invoke. If you remember, I said that this block function is attached on the initial block, which is this one right here. Move like yo-yo is false initially. We are setting it to be true here. So for this block here, move like yo-yo is false. If we run the game now and cat lands on that block, notice the block is gone now and the cat is destroyed. So this is why am I doing that? So we need to test if, let me go back into the block script. So we need to test if move like yo-yo is true because those blocks that have move like yo-yo set to true we know that they are created right here and they are not the initial block. So now if I go back here into Unity and I hit the run button or play button, notice when it lands on the initial block, nothing happens. But if we land on another block, it falls down. So this is the reason why we need to test here if move like yo-yo. And here we are calling this invoke fall block. So that's the reason why we are canceling it here because some other script could call this cancel or actually call this invoke already once. So just to make sure that this function here, fall block, is called only once, we're going to cancel invoke. And by the way, this invoke is going to call the function with this name. So I don't know if I talked about it, I forgot, so excuse me, do not attack me right away like, oh man, look what you did, you, you stupid, and so on and so forth. I don't want to hear it. So invoke is going to call the function with this name in this given time. So it's going to call fall block function, which is this one right here, in 0.25 of a second. Now make sure that the name here and the name of the function matches up or otherwise this will not work. So the name here 
needs to match up with the name of the function. So far, so good. But one more thing that we need to do is that we need to go into the block manager and I'm going to copy the name here. We need to go into the block manager. And here I said that we need to send a message. So if the cat landed block is not null, what we need to do, we need to say cat landed block dot send message. And here we need to paste this right here. So what does this do? Let me demonstrate that. So if I go back here, notice now when we move from any of the blocks, so if we move from this block, it's going to disappear. Notice now it disappeared. Any block that we move from him is disappearing. The reason for it is that we are calling this right here. So we are calling send message fall block. What this is going to do is let me just go back here into Google Chrome and I am going to simply say send message, send message unity and scripting API game object send message. What this does, let us take a look at it. Description calls the method named method name. So the method name is actually the parameter. So this one right here, it's the parameter that we are well actually passing this right here. This is the name of the method. And it says calls the method name on every mono behavior in this game object. So let's assume that we have 15 scripts attached on the block and we are calling this send message. This send message is going to enter or go on that game object. And it's going to go in every single script that is attached on the game object. And it's going to search for a function called fall block and it's going to call it. So if we have 30 functions attached on this block and if those are actually 30 scripts and if those 30 scripts have inside of them a script or a function called fall block, this right here is going to call it. So it's going to go in every script. Again, I'm repeating, this is important, write it down. It's going to go in every single script attached on that game object and search for the function named fall block. If it finds it, it is going to execute it. An interesting thing is that nobody talks about this and professional game developers use this all the time. So I'm also going to uncomment this out here and I'm going to create two of these blocks. So now if I go back every single block that we move from, so when we move away from him, we are gonna simply, well, close it or actually we are gonna destroy it. And I cannot move further because I did not land on a block. And the reason for it is because here into the cat movement, let me just go and find it. It's right here. If is not dead and block manager, we landed on the block. So if it's not equal to null, if we did land on a block, then we will be able to move. But now since we are destroying the blocks because we are calling this fall block, when we leave the block, it is automatically gonna be destroyed. So now we are going to fall into the water and kill the cat. But in order to do that, we need to code that behavior. So fire here from awesometoots.com. I will see you guys in the next video where we are going to code the cat's, well, dead effect when the cat dies. And we are going to create that splash when the cat falls into the water. Also, don't forget to go down into the description below. The link is there for downloading the project and complete assets. So see you then, guys. Bye bye.